Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman, and this is the Chili Sugar. We've been having a blast surfing this board. Uh, I've been surfing this one quite a bit. This is a 6.0 by 22, 2 and 7 eighths, 42.4 liters. Also, my uh, partner in crime, our shipping manager, Zach Johnson, also has his own 6.0, and he's been loving his. Super fun board to surf, really rangy, like good summer, you know, if, if you're, you know, a summer fish, like you just go to board every day in the summer. Uh, but I think what really kind of mystifies people with all fish in general like this is, uh, is the range that they have. A lot of people mistake these as being grovelers uh, when in actuality, like the twin fin, you know, twin pin fish was designed for better waves. Uh, and then people found out later that they work as grovelers. So they do work for groveling, uh, but they do also work in better waves as well. What do we like about this board uh, is the performance. I mean, basically this board marries the easy surfing and mad down the line speed of a, of a standard twin fin fish, but it has more performance built into it, uh, more performance as far as like maneuverability and more performance as the ability to handle in, uh, in even better waves than a standard twin fin fish. The big differences are the modern twist. Like Chili says, it's a, it's a twin fin fish with a modern twist. The modern twist is that it's very subtle uh, and a lot of times you can't see it if you're looking at a picture of the board or even up close. But once you compare it to another twin fin fish, you'll notice that on the sugar, they brought the nose in more. So it's got a little bit narrower nose. It has a, a more foiled nose. So you can see the thickness flow of the board really thins out forward to the wax line right here. And there's also just a little uptick in the rocker at the very end. So not enough rocker to slow your paddling down, but definitely enough rocker when combined with the more narrow nose and the thinner nose that when you're doing late drops, you don't stab the nose or as Jeremy Gray's throw says, you don't throw a dart and then get thrown over the front. So that helps with the, not only with late drops and fitting it in tight parts of the wave, but it also helps with the swing weight of the board. Um, any, you know, any of that area that you could take off when you're throwing it through the turns, you're throwing less weight around, you know, five, six to six feet away from you. So it does make the board more maneuverable as well and not as grabby just because the, the area is reduced. The other thing I would say that's more subtle than this change is the rails are a little bit more foiled than a standard fish. And then also in the tail, the cutout is just a little bit more slight than a standard fish as well. And so that helps with the gravel side of it. It gives you a little bit more push off, the, off your back foot and generating speed. Uh, but you still have the hold in better surf uh, again, coming from that twin pin, because if you look at this board and just like kind of black out from my arm down, you basically have a pintail single fin, which is obviously a great design for bigger waves. So these boards on rail have really good hold, a lot more than you would think. And that's like kind of what always tends to surprise people like, oh my God, I can't believe that guy was riding a fish in those conditions. But they actually hold really, really well, especially when you combine it with that more tapered rail and then the, the more foiled out, slightly narrower nose with a little bit more kick out the front. So we surfed this board quite a bit this summer after we got done with our early summer flat spell and uh, just had a blast on it. And actually, e even coming off of bigger long boards and gliders, we got on this and got uh, in sync right away, able to catch smaller waves and, and generate speeds, and then also rode it in uh, some punchier surf as well. Um, a lot of beach breaks and then a lot of down the line, like kind of sand points and just had a, uh, just had a blast on it. Super. Super fun board, not only within our own team, but also the customers at a bottom have come, been coming back raving. A lot of them saying it's replacing a, a lot of boards in their quiver. They just have so much fun on it. So taking a look at the fin setup, obviously twin fin fish. This is just gonna have two boxes in it. My board here has futures. Uh, the fins I was riding are the future K1 keels. And these are honeycomb with a uh, bamboo on the outside. And these are great uh, keel fins just for generating a ton of speed. Uh, good hold off the bottom, but just really being able to linear like up and down the wave and just fly down the line. Really good setup. Uh, also the sugars, you'll see some sugars with FCS two boxes, uh, cause FCS now offers quite a, quite a few keel fin or higher aspect twin fin designs uh, that would complement this board really well. But again, all of them are dedicated 
twin fins. One last thing to mention is that this board is available in a couple different constructions. Uh, we carry in stock uh, all the PU polys in, in this board, but you can also order it in EPS epoxy. Uh, one of the different construction methods that Chile offers with EPS epoxy if you want to get the weight down. Um, typically, myself, like in this board, I would typically go with a poly just because I like the momentum in this style of board, like for generating that linear down the line speed. But if you're an epoxy fan, we can get it for you in the 50-50 EPS epoxy from Chile as well. Again, it's the Chile Sugar, a twin fin fish with a modern twist. If you have any questions on this board or you'd like to place an order, you can give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or you can look us up online, realwatersports.com. Thanks for tuning in.